for lovers, as the state slogan proudly proclaims, and it's Capital City this evening. Soccer lovers are filing into historic City Stadium as the Richmond Kickers host FC Tucson, presented to you by CBS 6. Joe Malva here with you on ESPN Plus this evening. Richmond looking for its second consecutive victory at home, coming off of a 1-0 victory over forward Madison last week. It was a big victory early on for Richmond. A bunch of teams very close in the middle of the standings, and they separated themselves from the forward Madison team last week with this victory. Emiliano Terzaghi is hot up top, supplied the goal. The Argentinian making his mark in the early stages of this season for the Richmond Kickers. But our player to watch tonight, brought to you by CBS 6, is the man at the back, Akira Fitzgerald. He has had a stellar start to 2020, and he's continuing his stellar form from 2019. The goalkeeper is always among the best in League One, up there in saves, always up there in clean sheets, going back to last season, and he is off to a tremendous pace in 2020. A look now at those numbers. The one that I want to highlight, the clean sheets. He had nine clean sheets in 26 starts in the 28-game season last year. On pace for 11 this year. The saves are there. The save percentage, 90. That is incredible compared to the 70 he had last season. And tonight he is tasked with keeping FC Tucson out of the net. They have had some trouble scoring in the early stages. Just three goals in their first three games so far this year. And they have a flair for the dramatics. All three have come after the 87th minute. But it's a team that is coming together. They had a players-only meeting this week. They are ready to come out, show themselves, and get points in Richmond tonight. And it is going to be a key matchup against their former head coach in Darren Sawatsky. Now, this is their third road game of the season, four of their first five on the road. So if they can steal some points here, they have a nice little homestand coming up back in Tucson. So many miles traveled, and they've got another midweek road game against Orlando coming up. But right now, the focus on this first road game. It's FC Tucson on the road against the Richmond Kickers. Huge game for the middle of the USL League One standings. We will be back with all the action in a moment, right here on ESPN+. Plus. Richmond Kickers, FC Tucson. When building our home, I knew that the stone was going to be the absolute foundation to our house. I knew it needed to be durable, but also I wanted it to be beautiful. I love working with Absolute Stone Design because their customer service is top notch, their staff is super friendly, and most of all, they truly care. Come explore Absolute Stone Design's reimagined showroom, featuring our all new shower and flooring galleries. No dream home is complete without Absolute Stone Design. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Bon Secours, healthcare for the universe of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Most auto insurers love when you have two cars. And they love it even more when you have a driveway full. Because they get to charge you more. At Elephant Insurance, we believe the more cars you have, the more you save. We call it the Elephant Multi-Car Discount. It's like buying in bulk. And you can save up to 25%. Take control of your car insurance. Quote online today and see what you can save at elephant.com. Joe Malfa back here at City Stadium with you in Richmond, Virginia. Presented by Woodfin, this matchup between the Kickers and FC Tucson. A look now at the lineups for Richmond, brought to you by Absolute Stone Design. This is how they line up this evening. At the back, it's Akira Fitzgerald, as it always is for this Richmond squad. And Kyle Venter, the anchor at the back, he is with Ivan Ma Magal Hayes in this one, new pairing at the back. Up top, again, a, a new look with Mutaya Moape getting the start. Emiliano Terzaghi, the man to watch on the right wing. Two goals already this season 
for Richmond and Darren Sawatsky. Now a look to Sawatsky's former team, now coached by John Gallus, FC Tucson. Very happy to have Marancio in goal. He's a man who they think can get plucked for USL Championship or another league very soon. And then speed on the left wing with Shaq Adams, the man to watch on the left side for FC Tucson. We are just about set to kick off here at City Stadium. Socially distant sellout crowd for the kickers. Match day number four for both of these sides. Please remember to use the aisles to get up and down the bleachers. Please do not walk on the seats. Please pay attention to the action on the field at all times. Soccer balls can enter the stands with a high rate of speed. Underway in the River City. The Richmond kickers in there, all reds at home, going from right to left. Tucson and the all whites from left to right. Two coaches very familiar with each other. Darren Sawatsky hired John Gallus last year to be his assistant at Tucson. Now coaching against each other today. Early pressure at the back from Pavone, and it gets the ball for Richmond. Speaking with both coaches this week, they had nothing but high praise for each other. And they knew that this would be, as they called it, a dogfight and a chess match. It's going to be a dogfight on the field. Both of teams, very hungry young players, looking to get after it. And then on the sidelines between Gallus and Sawatsky, two guys who have coached against each other at the academy level, at the USL League 2 level, coached with each other last year, and now against each other at the League 1 level. Going to be a chess match throughout which one of them can outdo the other and surprise the other because they know each other so very well, it's hard to slip anything by each other. Errant pass from Somersault. Here in the newly renovated City Stadium. Turnover, FC Tucson going forward. In the box, a chance here towards the end line. Saved by Godoy. Back into the mixer. Still loose. Down shot saved by Fitzgerald. I believe the flag went up for offside anyway, but Akira Fitzgerald wasting no time putting out a highlight reel save, though it again technically won't count. All that effort for nothing on the stat sheet. But he is on early, as we can tell. One theme from John Gallus was getting forward early and converting an opportunity when they had it. Turnover led to an early opportunity. Offside flag, Anakira Fitzgerald thwarted it. But good early sign of life from an FC Tucson team that has struggled to find the back of the net. Again, the three goals they have this season all came in the 87th minute or later. And two of them came in the 87th minute or later against a Fort Lauderdale CF team that was down to nine men. So Gallus happy with the opportunities they've created, unhappy with their ability to convert or lack thereof. Out wide, intercepted, coming up, Antley. Antley and Somersault came together tough. Danielle Chesky, the official tonight. She blows the whistle in favor of FC Tucson. Another look at that one on the Absolute Stone design replay. Innocent play, both guys coming in for a 50-50 ball. But Somersault definitely got the worst of it. That pass out to the left wing was in search of Tommy Silva. The teenager getting his first start for FC Tucson tonight. On the run, sends it towards the middle. And it's going to earn a corner for FC Tucson. Silva committed to UCLA, was fully anticipating leaving Tucson after just a month or so to go to college. But with the current situation of fall sports in the Pac-12 getting canceled, Tucson gets the boost. They get to keep him on the roster, and he gets to stay here and help this team that is his local childhood team was going to watch their games at Keno Sports Complex ever since he was eight. Now the 18-year-old starting. Ali Velten's delivery towards the goal. And 
Heinrich been able to deal with it. looking for an option, has to play all the way back. Team content with possessing. Darren Sawatsky called the style of his foe tonight, John Gallus. A very romantic style of soccer. They want to possess, they want to pick the right moments, work around the wings, find their opportunities going forward. They lead the league, or among the top of the league leaders in passes completed. Averaging 50%, 57% possession through their first three games combined. A look now at the keys to the game. Brought to you by Draper Aiden. Apply pressure for Richmond. They've done that plenty early on. And for Tucson, it's just a matter of working together. Going forward as a unit, defending as a unit. They had that players only meeting this week to talk about some of the things that have been plaguing them. And have gotten them out to this slow start with just three points in their first three. Coming off of two losses against Omaha and against Chattanooga as the flag once again goes up on Shaq Adams. And their win again, it was a struggle in week one against Fort Lauderdale. They scored in the 87th to tie and in the 90th to win it after playing the entire second half up two players. Two first half red cards from Fort Lauderdale. Near turnover there by Pavone. Now they're able to take it. Scott Thompson on the left side. Slide tackle put in and the whistle blown. Alarcon not happy with that call. Another look on the absolute stone design replay. Seemed like he got some of the ball but the body as well. And a chance here early on on a set piece for Richmond. John Gallus said his defenders would have to be very mindful of these set pieces. Darren Sawatsky prides himself on making the most of these opportunities for his side. It'll be Mwape to deliver. service, whipped in, headed towards goal and into the back of the net. Magal Hayes gets it done on the set piece. His header beats Carlos Marancio at the back post and Richmond flies to a great start. Scored by number four, in the seventh minute, assisted by number 10, Mutaya Mwape. Darren Sawatsky wanted his team to start quickly, start on that front foot, put the pressure on Tucson, who has struggled to score goals, to have to come up with one after going down early. And that elephant insurance goal from Yvonne Magalhaes gives Richmond that 1-0 lead. Tucson goes to work again from the back. Richmond using to, looking to use some energy off of that goal. Riley Kraft pressing forward, commits the foul. But this team is buzzing. John Gallus said there's usually some drama whenever his teams lock horns. With Darren Sawatsky's teams. And we get an early goal. Some early heated chippy play between the players. And an exciting start overall at City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. Can Tucson regroup? Coaches all the time will tell you the first five minutes after a goal when you're most vulnerable.
For the first 10 minutes, Tucson has been trying to just pass around the back. But Richmond not giving them any room with which to work. And now Antley looks to take it back again for the kickers. Working with Kraft, now he'll switch it into space. The goal scorer, Miguel Hayes. Bulldock dispossessed. Remains in the possession of the kickers. Darren Sawatsky, the right side of your screen. The man in black always dresses in black on that sideline. That's his staple for Richmond. But the men in white going forward now. Shot from distance. Fitzgerald, as always, there to parry it away. Eli Velton thought about something spectacular there. Does earn the corner. Picked his head up, laces through the ball. And a save by Fitzgerald on the absolute stone design replay. Corner sent in. The flex still loose and clear. Some gray skies coming into City Stadium. Had some rain before this one started. Pitch a little slick. Clean tackle by Riley Kraft. Aaron Sawatsky had nothing but praise for the youngster in the middle of the field, maturing very quickly with the minutes he's gotten early in this season. Kraft in possession now. Richmond, not a team who has worried much about possession so far this season. Always been on the wrong side of the possession stat. But as Darren Sawatsky says, it's not how much you possess it, it's what you do with it. And they get the early goal off the set piece. As I mentioned right before the set piece too, John Gallus expressed his concern with how his team would handle set pieces, knowing that Sawatsky always takes pride in cooking up something dangerous. And the first set piece they had results in a goal. Yvonne Magalhaes, the difference maker right now. Tucson has yet to score first in a matchup this season and play with the league. Another thing that Gallus was hoping would change tonight. He's curious to see how his team would handle the lead, but not to be the case. Going forward, Somersault chips in and away again by Miguel Hayes. Last off, Somersault. Giving it right back to Tucson off the throw. Richmond thought that was out for a throw in their favor, but Fitzgerald would just boot it all the way down. You see there, that skip up over the head of Niall Logue shows you how slick the field is right now after Mother Nature came through a bit earlier. Godoy calling for it. Doesn't get to him. Eli Velton dispossessed before he can make that pass. Connecting in the final third has been a struggle for Tucson. No problem possessing at the back through the midfield. It's just been a, a mental block in that final third. Chances have been there, but then whenever they've come, it's just one little thing that's off. That prevents them from finding the back of the net, whether it's a guy slipping, a bad deflection that doesn't go in their favor. Some lucky bounces have not been going their way. Pair that with, again, just some link-up trouble in that attacking third, and it's led to their early season goal-scoring woes. Calvo did a nice job to win that one from Bolduck. Jack Adams. In 
inside to Alarcon, and now all the way out wide for Calvo, pushing up from his right back spot. A Tucson team that likes to attack through those flanks. Tommy Silva calling for it on that left flank. The left back gets it now, but knocked away by Moape. Silva on the left, Calvo on the right. To attack as those wing backs in this Tucson lineup. Calvo with it again. Foul goes against Riley Kraft. He's been active in the midfield early. Somersault has taken a bit of a beating early as well. He's drawn a couple of fouls. Absolute Stone Design replay shows you Kraft came right in, nothing but leg. Quarter of an hour gone. Joe Malpa here with you on ESPN Plus for USL League One action on this Saturday evening. Early goal from Yvonne McGalhays. Came in the eighth minute. This Richmond Kickers game is sponsored in part by Atlantic Uni Union Bank. If you are ready to bank better, visit AtlanticUnionBank.com or a branch today, member FDIC. Corner total rising quickly for Tucson. Haven't been able to do anything with it just quite yet. A couple of dangerous balls sent in. Led to some loose situations in front. But can't find the back of the net. And this one doesn't even get into the mixer. Blocked away by it looked like Antley on the right flank. Almost stolen. Now Kraft again there to wreak havoc on Tucson. Two players collide, and Tucson just looking disjointed at the back right now. Springs an attack for Bolduck, calling for a foul. Didn't get it. Kraft there again. Bolduck in possession and now taken down. This is going to set up another set piece for Richmond. Last time resulted in a goal from a similar spot on the field, but can't say enough about the play of Riley Kraft so far. Doy, the striker for this team, tracking all the way back, committing that foul on the absolute stone design replay. Can lightning strike twice for Richmond? And I don't mean the weather. We are okay in that front right now. Just some rain that has come through the area. I mean on the goal front. Set piece from this left flank in the eighth minute. Can they do it again in the 18th? Chesky not happy with the fact that Moape clearly moved that one. They spray the line there so players don't do that. And he still did it, tried to get away with it. Chesky makes him move it. And now he's set for the delivery. Sends it in, back post again, loose, still loose, whistle blows. Foul called on one of the men in red in front there. A couple of bodies colliding. Carlos Marantio set to get it back in play. 21-year-old out of Hermosillo, Mexico. Drew very high praise from John Gallus, who doesn't believe he'll be in Tucson very long. Has the talent to be plucked, whether it's a USL championship team, MLS team, or foreign team, very quickly. But happy to have him while they do. into the corner, moves it off last, Richmond. Luke Pavone gives chase. Claimed he knocked it off the defender's leg, did not. Marancio gets it back into play. Charlie Booth getting the start tonight. Finds Somersault, tucking deeper into the midfield. Plays as the defensive midfielder in this a little bit of a quirky 4-1-4-1 formation for FC Tucson. Moape has 
an overlap run coming if he wants it. Takes it himself for now. Malone couldn't turn. Moape recovers. Now to Kraft. And he'll just reset back to the goal scorer, Miguel Hayes. A little spell in position here for Richmond. And as I say that, long ball, much too long for Moape. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. Select is the official ball supplier of USL League One and many of the elite leagues throughout Europe. For the latest Select products and special offers, please visit www.selectsportsamerica.com. Alarcon forced to go back to Booth. This high press from Richmond giving Tucson fits at the back. And again, they take away in the attacking half. Bulldog looking forward through to Terzaghi. Still loose, coming across. Mawape there to corral it. Every second ball is taken by a man in red. This shot did not take a deflection. And it's out for a goal kick. Esteban Calvo sliding into pressure with Taya Mawape. Takes charge of this one. Building out of the back once again. Marancio directing some traffic. But doesn't get all of this, and Mawape takes it. Gives it right back. Thompson, the good slide, wins it back for Richmond. Very sloppy in the defensive half from Tucson. No call here from Danielle Chesky. Down on the ground in some pain was Luke Pavone. Tucson plays through. It's Tucson in total control of that possession, 73%, but not much of it meaningful. And Richmond forcing turnovers in the attacking half. Already with one goal, looking for two now. Ball whipped in, headed out for a corner. directing traffic in front of his goal. Riley Kraft, Mutaya Mawape, gaining something up on the corner. Looks like it's just gonna be a delivery now from Kraft as Mawape leaves the area. Sent in, center of the box. Thought it might have come off of a Tucson player once again, but last off Miguel Hayes, goal kick for Tucson. Marancio, 13 starts, one clean sheet. 20 goals conceded last year for Tucson. Gets things rolling again. Kraft, this time commits the foul. He's been very active in the midfield, but now he's gonna have to be careful. Looks like Danielle Chesky is giving him the yellow card, and she does. Kraft has been all over the place in these first 24 minutes, but now has to be mindful. But the one nil lead, can't afford to go down a man this early. Tucson wouldn't complain about it though. Two early red cards in their victory this season by the opponent, Fort Lauderdale. 
Tucson went on to win that one two to one. So they would say thank you very much to another early red card by the opponent. And Richmond says thank you very much for possession back once again on that free kick. Lot of space taken on that throw. Looking to get forward for Richmond, but Silva comes away with it for Tucson. Esteban Calvo with it now. Can't find that connecting ball to Ellie Velton. Terzaghi chips forward. Pavone wasn't on the run, but Richmond bailed out by a foul behind the play as Terzaghi was taken down. Kraft plays quick, Moape. Overlapping run coming from Thompson. Moape keeps it, sends one in. Silva heads it out the back side. Nodded further along by Vergen. Haven't called his name a ton tonight. It looked to him to control the midfield, but he flies by this one, and it stays with Richmond. Falk. Taken down cleanly by the youngster. Silva plenty active in his first start for Tucson on that left wing. And Neil Chesky having a conversation. Cone, Summer Saul, unhappy with something. Want to hear from the referee about whatever the case may be as Richmond is waiting to take the throw. He's over on the 10. Now we continue to pause as Moape was down injured in the corner, hobbles off. the moment, Richmond down a man. We'll monitor that situation. See some of the beautiful murals in the background here at City Stadium. Part of the renovation of this historic venue in the capital city of Virginia. Fancy footwork by Antley down in the corner, but can't make anything of it. Miguel Hayes looking long. Bolda can't keep it in, very close, but just out. CBS 6 is a proud partner of the Richmond Kickers. For complete weather coverage, watch Chief Meteorologist Zach Daniel weeknights. dropping deeper into the midfield. But again, not on the same page, looking to make that linking pass into the final third. Tucson with 72% of the possession, but the bulk of that has come around midfield or in their defensive third. They have three shots, just one on target. Same for Richmond, three shots, one on target, but the one on target found the back of the net. The difference right now off the head of Ivan Magalhaes. 26-year-old Brazilian, University of Maryland product, has bounced around USL Championship before finding a home here. Kraft taken down. 
I don't know that any player in this game so far has been as active as Riley Kraft. Offensively, defensively, committing fouls, drawing fouls like that. He's showing why Darren Sawatsky was praising him seemingly more than any other player in the conference calls with coaches this week. Very high on Riley Kraft, a 22-year-old out of California. In the past with Orlando City B and Oklahoma City Energy. And that will take us into the Woodfin hydration break. For the very best in-home comfort, cool off with Woodfin. John Gallus calling his players in for a discussion here. Down a goal. Darren Sawatsky has to be happy with the early performance from his Richmond side. Now, John Gallus did joke with us that he might come out and wear white tonight as a little rib towards his friend Sawatsky, who always comes into these matches wearing all black. And he did. He, he was true to his word. Not all white, didn't come out with the white pants, but does wear the white top. The two very good friends texting throughout the week. We're very excited for this evening. Gallus said he couldn't wait to see Sawatsky and give him a safe face mask hug once he saw him. Very close friends. Foes tonight on the field. But Sawatsky hired him last year at Tucson. Was very happy to see him rise to become the head coach once Sawatsky left for Richmond. And now battling it out in the middle of the USL League One table here in match week five. The early goal from Ivan Magalhaes. They're talking to Sawatsky. The difference right now. Came off of a free kick delivery by Mutaya Mawape, who you just briefly saw on your screen. Went down, injured a few moments ago, but back out there on the field now. He got the assist on the goal. Miguel Hayes found the back of the net past Marancio. That's the difference right now. Akira Fitzgerald hasn't been too busy back there. One of the saves he made early on didn't actually count because the flag went up for offsides. Heck of a save though it was. Forced to make a diving save on a long shot from Ellie Velton. Other than that, quiet back there. Terzaghi tries his own shot from distance, but this one troubles nothing but the advertisement board. Don't miss a minute of action in 2020. Sign up today and get alerts all year long by following your club on ESPN.com. Search for the Richmond Kickers and then click the follow button to keep up with the latest news and scores. Plus, get reminders on Richmond's next match. Go to ESPN.com now and click follow for your club. Calmly played back. Fitzgerald. Hantley cuts in, gives it away. And Tucson turn into something quickly. Alarcon looking forward, but immediately two red jerseys converge on him and win it cleanly. Moape looks to break, finds Terzaghi. Thought about a long ball to the right side, now does send it. It's Bolda. Inside Terzaghi on his left foot, weaving through traffic, shot is blocked. Two goals on the season already. He had visions of his third. And Kraft will grab it, enter out to the corner. Just a second corner of the evening for Richmond. First one didn't amount to anything. Kraft sends in the second. Ball loose. And now Tucson through Godoy able to clear for a moment. But no white jersey on the end of that. Only Matt Bolduck. Pavone who has switched to the right side tries to feed in. Bolduck can't get it to him. And 
Bulldog taken down, takes down Ellie Velton. Yellow card issued to Richmond number seven, Matt Bulldog in the 35th minute. Another look at the absolute stone design replay. As Bulldock goes into Danielle Chesky's book. Two yellow cards in the midfield for Richmond, the other Riley Kraft. Fitzgerald into some space. He has to corral that one. Dicey moment at the back. Score surveys his options, just takes his space. Wants someone to check in, finally does get someone, and is sent right back to the defense again. Kraft to settle. Head it out. Ball stays with Richmond. Elephant Insurance is a proud supporter of the Richmond Kickers. If you are driving less these days, Elephant Insurance believes your rate should reflect that. That's why they've lowered their auto rates to help their drivers save. See how Elephant can help you save by starting your quote today at elephant.com. Little give and go. Ball a little bit too long for Trezaghi to keep it in stride, but he recovers well into space. Left wing Mwape. Something on for the kickers. Step over move, end line, sends it in front. And it's cleared away for the moment. Sliding back onto that was Charlie Booth. Tucson looks to counter. Calvo wanted Shaq Adams, but nothing doing there. Given right back, though. Godoy. Ellie Velton out to Shaq Adams again. Into the box for Tucson. Sent in, deflected on top of the netting. Corner conceded. Sloppy play at the back from Richmond. A little sigh of relief there from Akira Fitzgerald, unhappy with his back line. Wills them on. And the absolute stone design replay. Alarcon set to take the corner. Dealt with. Tucson has had a few of those now, four of them to be exact. Nothing too threatening. Richmond very stout at the back as Fitzgerald off his line to gather this one. Richmond has not conceded since their opener. 3-2 loss against Greenville on July 25th. Here we are on August 15th, and they haven't conceded since. Nil-nil against Tormenta, 1-nil victory over Madison. Long ball towards Mwape. Can he keep it in? He does. Just at the end line. But there to meet him was Calvo. Dangerous pass into the middle of the field. Coaches always hold their breath when they see that, but Elivelto unable to clear it for Tucson. Somersault can't find Adams. Ton of speed on that left side for Adams, but they haven't really been able to play him anything into space just quite yet. They've tried a couple of times, but just haven't found the proper weight on it.
Ingersoll, nifty little footwork there to get out of a sea of red. And just reset for Tucson. And that's what it's been a lot of so far, just resetting, struggling to go forward. Those just three shots, one on target for the team in white tonight. Alarcon forced to reset at the back again. Possession numbers have dipped for Tucson from what they were earlier. Heavy tackle here on Silva. Chesky immediately over to pull the card out of the pocket. Yellow card issued to Tucson, number 33, Derek Silva. Absolute stone design replay shows you the foul by Silva, the 18 year old. A little over eager on that one. Three players now with yellow cards. Two for Richmond, one for Tucson. Kraft and Bolduck, the guilty parties for Richmond as Terzaghi. Jogs that one off. Takes his space, finds Moape. They've attacked through this left wing very often. Again, they do so. Thompson in the middle. Ball loose, still loose. The shot is stopped. Couldn't tell if it was blocked or saved. Still in the danger area. Kraft towards goal. Terzaghi finds the back of the net for the third time this season. Tucson couldn't clear their lines. Richmond persists. And they find the back of the net for a second time in this first half. Kraft's initial shot blocked. Terzaghi cleans it up. Marancio very unhappy at the back. And the absolute stone design replay for Tucson. 27-year-old Argentinian striker has made his presence felt in the early stages of this season for Richmond. Darren Sawatsky talked about unleashing him on the world. And they have done that. For the second game in a row, Tucson faces a two goal deficit. They were able to rally late and pull one back against Omaha, but fell two to one. Darren Sawatsky's team out to an incredible start in the first half against his former club former assistant coach John Gallus, who's going to have some things to change at halftime for Tucson. Trying to direct traffic, but nobody's showing for him. He takes it back, he'll try again. Able to find the feet of Vergen. Graf with a soft touch in the back. And sends Ellie Veltz under the ground. Graf does have to be careful. Already a yellow card once. Perhaps a chance on a set piece for Tucson to pull one back heading into the half as we're in the 45th minute. Alarcon 
Elia Velto stand over it. It's Alarcon sent in. Ball loose. And the foul is called against Tucson. As Charlie Booth was very physical. Looks like he's holding his face after that collision. And Danielle Chesky will signal to the sideline to have the trainers come on. Another look at the absolute stone design replay. Flash of the heads there it seemed. As Antley and Booth challenge each other for that. Launches forward, hoping for a couple more opportunities here for Tucson before we head into the half. No official word on stoppage time. So we are just going at the liberty of Danielle Chesky right now. And she gives Tucson another opportunity here on a set piece. Could hear someone on the sideline for Richmond asking for how much time, please. No one really sure how much we have here in Ucrop stoppage time. Nothing was shown on the board. Everyone kind of left in the dark right here for now. Tucson looking to capitalize on a set piece opportunity. Sent in, Fitzgerald lining it up and he'll just let that one go all the way out for a goal kick. Indicated three minutes of stoppage time. Finally, we are shown three minutes of stoppage time after about two have already been completed. You can understand the frustration of Darren Sawatsky on the sideline for Richmond. But just one more to go here in Ukrup stoppage time. Richmond is going to be very happy going into the break. Barring any breakdown at the back now that would see them conceding. Saul and Silva connect. Bergen dispossessed. As Victor Falk was able to win possession back for Richmond. They'll bide their time here. No rush at all. You see those last 20 seconds bleed off the clock. Head into the half with a 2-0 lead. the halftime whistle from Danielle Chesky and Richmond has given this crowd something to cheer about. It was Yvonne Magal Hayes in the eighth minute assisted by Mutaya Mwape and then Emiliano Terzaghi that man right there who doubled the lead for Richmond in the 42nd. He collects a loose change in front. Assist officially credited to Riley Kraft, Matthew Bolduck and that takes us into the half. Richmond up top 2-0 back in a few moments. Stop on the Bond Secours Halftime Show from City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. When building our home, I knew that the stone was going to be the absolute foundation to our house. I knew it needed to be durable, but also I wanted it to be beautiful. I love working with Absolute Stone Design because their customer service is top notch, their staff is super friendly, and most of all, they truly care. Come explore Absolute Stone Design's reimagined showroom, featuring our all new shower and flooring galleries. No dream home is complete without Absolute Stone Design. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, 
And when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Bon Secours, healthcare for the universe of you. It's a brand new year, but things will be different. It won't be easy, but we can help you prepare. <laughs> Together we can overcome these challenges. We'll help your family make informed decisions so you can go safely back to school. Stories every day on CBS 6 and WTVR.com. Making things easier for you has never been more important. At Atlantic Union Bank, here's what that means. Pull up to our drive through where service meets safety. With debit card controls, turn your personal card off if you suspect fraud, then turn it back on when everything's okay. And remember our free identity theft resolution services, because hackers never rest. Just a few ways we make banking easier. Learn more at AtlanticUnionBank.com. Joe Malfa back here on the Bon Secours Halftime Show with you on ESPN+. Plus. We take a look now around the league at the Brace Race. A lot of guys early on have had multi-goal games in the early stages of this season, four to be exact, through the first four weeks, and it all started with Jake Keegan. Now, his brace wasn't a brace until Tuesday of that week. This first goal of his was initially an own goal, ruled in his favor later that week on a Tuesday. But on the same pace so far as we were last year, four multi-goal games through four weeks. Last year, 27 multi-goal games, including hat-tricks, in 28 weeks. So, again, off to a similar pace of guys finding the net multiple times in the same game. Still waiting for that first hat-trick so far this year. But, again, four braces to date. The second came from Greg Hurst for Chattanooga all the way back again in that second week of the season. He did it against Tormenta. Now more from Tormenta in a moment. But Hurst leads the way in the Golden Boot race as well. Four goals this season in just three games for the Scottish striker. Now his teammate Stephen Beatty, one of the guys who had a multi, a couple of multi-goal games last season, had a hat trick and a brace to his name. He has yet to appear this year though for Chattanooga. One guy who has shown up and shown up well for Tormenta, Neil Vignelles. Probably the prettiest of the braces so far this season with that beauty. And then another one-timer from outside of the box. A couple of his current teammates had multi-goal games last year. Pato Boteo Faz and Devin Jamga now on Vignal's team in Tormenta. And again, early season, four guys with multi-goal games in four weeks. The most recent of them, the young 17-year-old Benny Redzik did it for North Texas. This North Texas team was no stranger to multi-goal games last year. The man on the ball now, Ronaldo Damas, had a couple himself, two hat-tricks, one brace. Now with FC Dallas, Ricardo Pepe had one hat-trick and two braces. But it's the youngster, Benny Redzik, a new star in the making in North Texas who got the first multi-goal game of the season for the defending champions. And again, last season, it was Damas who had the golden boot with 16 goals. Now Redzik is second in that race with three. So things are heating up atop the goal standings in USL League One. Now we see if we can get more of those here in Richmond. Back with more in a moment. Most auto insurers love when you have two cars. And they love it even more when you have a driveway full. Because they get to charge you more. At Elephant Insurance, we believe the more cars you have, the more you save. We call it the Elephant Multi-Car Discount. It's like buying in bulk. And you can save up to 25%. Take control of your car insurance. Quote online today and see what you can save at elephant.com. The USL is proud to bring professional soccer back into our communities and across the ESPN family of networks. Follow your local club and don't miss these exciting matches coming up on ESPN2 or ESPN Deportes. Dr. George Champis from Northwestern and U.S. Soccer's Chief Medical Officer joins me. The protocols that were created in the case of the USL Championship in USL League One takes well over 50 pages to document. Uh, describe the USL Championship's particular return to play and the role that you played in helping to craft those guidelines. 
Yeah, obviously the credit goes to USL. The credit goes to USL, their owners, all the staff, um, really putting in the work, uh, getting on calls multiple times a week with other leagues, but also recognizing that all the leagues can't be the same. Um, uh, and all recognizing that the, the elements are different uh, for each of them. And, and I think it's important to, to touch on that um, because uh, it, it's, it's important for us to be able to create a, a mitigation strategy, layers of protection um, that we, our players are comfortable with, that our public are comfortable with um, while respecting the virus. So USL has done a tremendous job. Uh, they've, they've invested a lot of time and energy consulting with others to be able to put this forth. Uh, hopefully I was a conduit and, and someone who provided you know, that medical expertise and brought everybody together. And, and if we can all come out of this uh, safe and, and, and be able to show a model, not only for sport, but for public, that would be a great outcome. Back here at City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. Joe Malpa here with you. A good crowd tonight at City Stadium, all abiding by the social distance rules from the local government that allow fans to be here. And now we take you around the USL with a look at some news and notes. Florida Feud, we had the first rivalry matchup in state last night. Orlando City B and Fort Lauderdale CF drawing 1-1 in the first intra-state contest. And the USL continues to unite against racism as teams show their support before, after, and during matches while they support diversity and oppose racism. Your player of the week was Ethan Vanacore Decker. Scored the goal and added an assist in a 2-1 victory for Omaha. I looked now at the rest of the team of the week. Vanacore Decker again, they're the player of the week. A man who has scored in tonight's game already, Emiliano Terzaghi also made that team this week with Richmond defender Ian Antley as well. We take a look now at the schedule here in USL League One coming up. We are into the meat of the schedule now. Games coming very frequently, some during the week as well. And full week of action coming up in week six now already. Hard to believe we are in week six after the long layoff. And the results of those games will contribute to this standings. At the top right now, Greenville still with 10 points. A bunch of teams after that. The advantage some of those teams have is uh, games in hand on that Greenville side, looking to make up points where they can. And Richmond right now has a chance to add three more to their tally. Still a second half to be played, but a two nothing lead for the kickers. And now we take a look around the league at the scoreboard in USL League One. Or Madison trounced South Georgia Tormenta last night for nothing, a huge victory for the Flamingos. And again, you saw that one one draw Orlando City B and Fort Lauderdale. Chattanooga and Omaha postponed. Greenville and Chattanooga tied right now at zeros. And then to end the week, North Texas against New England later this evening at 9 o'clock right here on ESPN+. Now the second half of action in Richmond coming up in a few moments. On the other side of the break, we have highlights and stats. I knew that the stone was going to be the absolute foundation to our house. I knew it needed to be durable, but also I wanted it to be beautiful. I love working with Absolute Stone Design because their customer service is top notch, their staff is super friendly, and most of all, they truly care. Come explore Absolute Stone Design's reimagined showroom, featuring our all new shower and flooring galleries. No dream home is complete without Absolute Stone Design. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Bon Secours, healthcare for the universe of you. My husband was laid off. We bought a house a week before. Sorry. We're doing everything that we can, but I would just ask people to be patient. Patience has run thin for people trying to collect their unemployment. Our station has been flooded with emails from viewers trying to get help, like this one. 
I've been calling for weeks since the end of March, basically every single day. CBS 6 is committed to holding state leaders accountable because you deserve a response. Making things easier for you has never been more important. At Atlantic Union Bank, here's what that means. Pull up to our drive through where service meets safety. With debit card controls, turn your personal card off if you suspect fraud, then turn it back on when everything's okay. And remember our free identity theft resolution services, because hackers never rest. Just a few ways we make banking easier. Learn more at AtlanticUnionBank.com. Joe Malfa back here on the Bonds Decor Halftime Show on ESPN Plus from Richmond, Virginia. We take a look now at the first half highlights to show you why Richmond is up 2 to nothing. brought to you by Elephant Insurance. It started with this delivery from Mawape. Magal Hayes does the rest. The header tucked perfectly into the corner past Carlos Marancio, and the kickers were off and running after this. It was all Richmond in the first half, in the attacking half, constantly pressuring FC Tucson. They look about as good as we have seen them so far this season. Not too many nervy moments at the back. Elie Velton here, the shot from distance that Fitzgerald had to save was the only save he had to make in the first half. That counted. He made a great save early on. Didn't count because of an offside. This delivery from Mawape led to a little bit of a chance for Richmond. Couldn't quite do anything with it. Foul called against Magal Hayes in the middle. But they would later get a second goal and double their lead sneaking one past Carlos Marancio. It came from a wild flurry of play. The first shot was blocked, but we'll see it again in a moment. Tucson had one more opportunity deflected on top of the netting. And it started with this flurry. Kraft blocked, Terzaghi cleans it up. Marancio very unhappy with his defenders. Could not get the ball out of the back line, and it cost them. They are down two nothing. They have possession by a large margin, 66 to 34, but they haven't done anything with it, and that's been their problem so far this year. They trail two nothing, three shots to Richmond's eight. Richmond has three on target to just a one for Tucson, and it has been all Richmond kickers early on in this one. Setting out to begin the second half here at City Stadium. You hear the applause for the first responders. <laughs> Danielle Chesky, a bit premature on the whistle, forgot about the applause. But a nice moment here at City Stadium. Nice gesture from this organization supporting the first responders who have been crucial here in 2020 as we battle the pandemic. Please remember to use the aisles to get up and down the bleachers. Please do not walk on the seats. Please pay attention to the action on the field at all times. Soccer balls can enter the stands at a high rate of speed at any time. Chesky set again to blow the whistle the to start the second Please half. Do not throw it on the field. Return it to the nearest staff member. The Richmond kickers of USL request that you It'll be Richmond to start things off here the with the two nothing lead. Entering the field or interrupting play in any manner shall be ejected and subject to arrest. The Richmond Kickers, USL, thank you for your cooperation. Silva clears. Adams plays back. In Richmond so far, 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Tucson, one win, two losses, no draws. Four points for the Kickers, three for Tucson. And Richmond looking to vault towards the top of the table. Three points would give them seven. The live standings show that Richmond actually now does move in to second place for the moment at least. Tied with seven points. Alongside Union Omaha trailing Greenville. Who with their current 0-0 scoreline against Chattanooga moves up to 11 points. And Richmond would have a game in hand on Greenville, though Omaha does have one in hand on Richmond. Omaha off today. Had their midweek canceled against Chattanooga. Thunderstorms rolled in and never relented. Did not allow that one to get played on Wednesday night. Coming up from the back, making the steal. Now Bolduc on the wing. Working on Silva. 
to the end line, whips one in, dangerous area, but nobody there for it in front of goal. Mawape skies that one. Crisis averted for Tucson. John Gallus, head coach of FC Tucson, wanted more urgency from his guys. And they have to show it here, facing a two goal deficit in the second half for the second game in a row. In this truncated 16 game season, picking up points at home, crucial. As Terzaghi is taken down. Darren Sawatsky spoke very highly of this City Stadium crowd from the matchup with Madison. Knows it can't be full capacity, obviously, but he sees this sport and this team as a unifier in the city. As we take a look at the absolute stone design replay there of Terzaghi going down. Sawatsky sees this team as something that has a chance to kind of lift the city in the wake of the pandemic. And the kickers have given this crowd plenty to cheer about in their two home matches so far. 1-0 winning against Madison, 2-0 lead here, and they continue to pressure that back line of Tucson. Flag goes up for offside. Miguel Hayes will get it back into play. Sawatsky thought this offense was operating at about 40% of its true potential. Have to imagine he was very happy with seeing two balls into the back of the net in the first half. Terzaghi now joins a tie for second place in the league with three goals to his name. About as hot as any striker in the league right now. Launches forward, hoping to find Pavone. But it's cut out at the last moment. Taken away again by Richmond. Terzaghi couldn't split the defenders. Maintains possession. Ball left by Bolduck for Antley. Rowan doesn't make it to Terzaghi. Tucson has not recorded a shot since the midway point of the first half. And Richmond still has not conceded a goal since their first game of the year against Greenville. Silva hoping to change both of those things right here. Sends one in, center of the box, and it's headed away by Miguel Hayes. Had the runner crashing towards the center of the goal, but lofted it a bit over the head of Alarcón. Tucson plays quick. Silva has that deflected. It's still loose, though. Miguel Hayes skies it. High into the RVA sky. And Tucson will start again from the back. Through from Logue. Jack Adams, though, couldn't find the feet. Takes a weird deflection off his chest on the clearance attempt by Venter. And Fitzgerald, no problem with it at the back. 30-year-old goalkeeper. Spent the bulk of his career, 82 appearances to be exact, with North Carolina FC in USL. Brief stint in the MLS with expansion side New York City FC for Akira Fitzgerald. And now has been stellar. Hasn't conceded in over two and a half games now for the Richmond Kickers. Bit of shoving going on down at the end line. It was 
Logue and Pavone going at it, but nothing comes of it, and Tucson just restarts play. Misplayed by Vergen. Terzaghi takes it. But Vergen does well to recover. Gets it out to Godoy on the wing. But the pass back for Vergen too long, taken by Miguel Hayes. Las Vegas takes center stage August 25th when Lights FC takes on Orange County SC on ESPN Deportes. Looking to maintain the pace set in Group B, both Las Vegas Lights FC and Orange County SC face a must win on the national stage. Don't miss the drama unfolding August 25th, 10 p.m. on ESPN Deportes. Kraft, swing and a miss. It's been quiet ever since he got the yellow card. Hasn't been able to be as active as he typically is. But still dangerous, servicing the ball whenever he has it at his feet. Didn't have any outlet there, so Richmond forced to go back. High pressure from Tucson, haven't seen them pressure this much, and it works out. Fitzgerald sends it out. Tucson back with it again. You see there, it's been 255 minutes now to be exact since Richmond last conceded. Dicey at the back, but the skilled center back Booth able to dribble out of it. Now looking to spring something. Silva, down two. Hoping for that moment in the final third that has just been eluding them. Again, no goals before the 87 minute mark this season for Tucson. Foul called here against Paul. They scored in the 87th and 90th against Fort Lauderdale CF back on July 25th. They scored in the 93rd against Omaha in their last one. Absolute stone design replay shows the foul from Falk. Godoy can't save it before it goes out. And now maybe a change up top for Tucson. Azad Liadi, the forward, checking in for Tucson. Gio Godoy will give way. He started as a striker tonight. Hasn't really shown much for Tucson. But Liadi will look to provide that spark off the bench. Surging ball in, Pavone to the corner. Moape, danger area for Richmond, lofts it. Silva heads clear for now, Moape sends it back in. Flex out for a corner kick. Riley Kraft was hoping for it on the back side. Silva rose to meet it on the absolute stone design replay. Kraft will service. Whipped in, back post, knocked away for the moment. Back into the middle and all the way across, fizzing past the post on the shot from Pavone. Not sure if that was a shot or if he was just hoping to Get a deflection off of somebody, but either way, it goes wide. And Tucson averts that crisis, but now they have to deal with something again. Another interception in the attacking half by Richmond. Falk down the wing. Silva there. Turns Falk around, gets it in the middle. Terzaghi 
in space. On his right foot, the shot is saved by Marancio. Now Tucson able to clear safely. Miguel Hayes, a nice outlet pass to Moape. Right back on the attack, Richmond. Moape very good with the ball at his feet. Tremendous vision as well. An assist to his name tonight. Antley thought that ball was going out. He didn't realize Bolduck was there. But back in the play now. Bolduck to cross, headed away. Logue. Excuse me, Booth heading that one clear. Kraft looks up to goal, has a shot, and it's parried away by Marancio. Marancio having to come up big the last few moments. Absolute stone design replay shows that one might have been earmarked for the lower corner, if not for Marancio's efforts. Another chance provided now on the corner for Richmond. Can almost sense a third goal coming for the kickers. Very threatening here in the second half. Sent in, loose. Alarcone looks to break. Two guys hot on his heels. Finds Shaq Adams looking for Liotti. Substitute can't get his first touch on it yet. Whistle was blown by Chesky. I believe she's calling it all the way back for a foul near midfield. That was the first chance to send Liotti into space. He has one of the three goals scored this year by Tucson. Eric Bergen, A.J. Valenzuela, each have one as well. Near the hour mark here at City Stadium. Richmond, a handful of shots here in the second half. Tucson still hasn't had one since the midway mark of the first half. Anytime they try to advance, they are pushed back by Richmond. Long ball from Logue, chested beautifully by Silva. Some space now for the youngster, finds Liotti. Still loose, now it's taken, Ellie Velton on his preferred left foot. Forced to spin around, Alarcon looks to send in a through ball towards the end line, but too long as he's looking for Calvo. Possession still squarely in the favor of Tucson at 65%, but again, just not able to do anything with it. Fans follow the Richmond Kickers and the rest of USL League One all season long on ESPN Plus, home of the USL, MLS, UFC, and more. Join the nearly 8 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch League One live every week. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com. Don't go anywhere after this one. We still have another matchup coming at 9 o'clock. North Texas taking on New England Revolution 2. And if you time it right, there'll be about a half an hour for you to move from this game to the Greenville-Chattanooga game before catching the kickoff of North Texas and New England. Plenty of USL League One action here on ESPN+. Greenville and Chattanooga into the second half in their matchup, still tied at zero. Greenville top of the table in the live standings with 11 points if that draw result holds. Chattanooga near the top as well. But if this result holds, Richmond would vault into second place with seven points. Darren Sawatsky's keys to this game for Richmond was being on the front foot early, starting fast, putting the pressure on Tucson. And they did that. Yvonne McGalhay scoring in the eighth minute, changed the complexion of this game very early on. 
Terzaghi double the lead in the 42nd for Richmond. And Tucson still searching for their first shot in the second half. Liotti into the box. Maybe it comes here. Sends it across. It doesn't. Miguel Hayes clears. Terzaghi able to get by Vergen into some space, taken down from behind. And the Argentinian down now in some pain. Some nifty footwork to break into some space. Niall Logue takes him down to stop the break on the absolute stone design replay. And he was shown the yellow card by Danielle Chesky. Yellow two members of the back line for Tucson in the book. It's Logue and Silva. Still two members of the kickers on yellows. Riley Kraft, Matt Bolduck. Kraft stands over the free kick. Sends in the cross, headed away, only as far as Mwape. Sends it right back in. Cross, middle of the box, headed up by Silva. Marancio off his line. Tucson holds strong. stoppage we will see a substitution for Richmond might it come here being told that it will be Mutaya Mawape off for the kickers and Jonathan Bolaños on whenever that time comes sub in, sub in. Uh. and it comes now Bolaños in, Moape out. Richmond substitution. Like for like substitution on that left wing for the kickers. Jonathan Bolaños replacing number 10, Mutaya Moape in the 65th minute. Again, both teams allowed five substitutions per the rule changes for this year, which can be made at three stoppages. So you can still only stop the game yourself three times like the old rule with three substitutions, but you can make five. Now you can also take advantage of the hydration breaks and the halftime break by making a substitution there. You're still allowed to stop the game three times if you're making a sub at a natural stop in the game. Silva into space, Liotti and Silva taken away by Antley, cleared further by Thompson. And Akira Fitzgerald has still had absolutely nothing to do back there for Richmond. His defensive line and the defensive midfielders have held very strong ever since the early goings of this one. That could change at any moment though. Liotti on it now, picks his head up, looks for goal, takes a shot, this is wide. First shot since the midpoint of the first half for Tucson, another look at it on the Absolute Stone Design replay. Leotti's first look for goal ever since he was subbed into this one. 22 year old forward out of Michigan. But still just the one save Fitzgerald has been forced to make tonight. Gallus acknowledged it would be tough to crack the back line of Darren Sawatsky. A couple of the staples of any Darren Sawatsky coach team is good defense and a really tough, intense press. And both of those have been on display tonight. Press has led to a few turnovers that have yielded some chances for Richmond. 
including the two goals. And the defensive line at the back holding strong. Again, just four total shots, one on target for Tucson. Who have 66% of the possession through 66 minutes, but nothing to show for it. gets it all the way back. Ever since he's come on, Tucson trying to find Liotti as much as possible. Couldn't quite find him in space there. Adams, the speedster, gives chase. Have to be very wary of Adams at all times on that left flank. 54th overall pick by Nashville in the MLS this season. As Ellie Melton is taken down by Falk. But Adam's speed could change the game at any moment. Gary Smith, head coach of Nashville, said it was a tough cut to get rid of Adams. He's got ridiculous pace and probably the quickest player off the mark that I've ever seen in a long time. The direct quote from the MLS head coach. We always see some issues between Brazil and Argentina on the international level. And they come together here, the Brazilian Eli Velton against the Argentinian Terzaghi. Some extracurriculars there. The dust settles, and Tucson set to whip in a free kick. Alarcon, Eli Velton stand over it. It's the Brazilian, whipped in, middle of the box, and it's over everybody. No deflections, just a goal kick. Elephant Insurance is a proud supporter of the Richmond Kickers. If you are driving less these days, Elephant Insurance believes your rate should reflect that. That's why they've lowered their auto rates to help their drivers save. See how Elephant can help you save by starting your quote today at elephant.com. More substitutions incoming for Tucson. Charlie Dennis checks in. Entering the match, number 10, Charlie Dennis. Replacing Eric Bergen, Eric Bergen gives away. Ramon Howell, Ramon Howell also checking in. Comes out for Raheem Summersall. Excuse me, comes in for Raheem Summersall. Two more attacking minus substitutions for Tucson. Hoping to get back into this one. Rancio under pressure, just forced to send it out. We'll look to see if Dennis can provide a spark now for Tucson. 27 games played, 25 starts in 2019 for Tormenta in League One. Created the second most chances in the league behind just Arturo Rodriguez, the league's eventual MVP. For the number 10 in white, Charlie Dennis. May change something up top for Tucson. We have 20 minutes of regulation remaining. side. Another cone in some pain. Another look at the absolute stone design replay and Polanos in on that one. Tucson restarts quickly. Apologize for the brief technical difficulties. Back here at City Stadium on ESPN Plus. Joe Malfa here with you. Richmond kickers dominant so far tonight. Not many opportunities for Tucson. Adams gives chase. 
Again, just four shots, one on target for Tucson compared to 13, five on target for Richmond. And it shows on the scoreboard. But don't go anywhere just quite yet. Tucson's three goals this year have all come after the 87th minute. So we're entering their prime goal scoring territory. They always prefer to make it interesting towards the end. Shield it out, but last off of Richmond as Bolaños tried to win possession. Dennis's first touch, heavy off the chest, almost concedes the corner. Some contact there, no call. Falk initiated the contact, had it there, plays it back, and Richmond possesses. They haven't had much of it. But they've made use of it when they have had the ball. The USL's elite pre-professional platform, USL Academy, allows clubs across the USL to build a pathway to pro soccer by bringing them together, top local youth talent. Following the success of the first Academy Cup events, clubs can now apply to participate in the USL Academy League, kicking off in spring 2021. For more information, visit usl-academy.com or search hashtag USL Academy on social media. A quick stoppage here as a kicker is down in the corner. They play down a man for the moment. Adams takes his space, looking for Silva, but too long. Substitution incoming here. Frederick Amencona in for Luke Pavone. Another like-for-like like substitution, attacking minded for Richmond. Not quite honing in on the defense just yet to protect this lead. They want more, Terzaghi looking to get it in the box and he's whistled now for the foul. And this stoppage is going to take us to our second half hydration break, presented to you by Woodfin. For the very best in home comfort, cool off with Woodfin, your home team. Fifteen minutes of regulation to go. And it has been just about all Richmond tonight, everywhere except for the possession stat. We'll take a look now at the goals that got Richmond to this point. Started early, eighth minute, service from Mwape. Perfect header tucked into the lower corner by Miguel Hayes. Center back of all players gets them on the board first. Then later, a big scramble in front. Not sure if that was saved by the goalkeeper or took a deflection. Anyway, it still stayed loose. Craft shot. Finds Terzaghi, and Terzaghi does the rest. Five white jerseys in the area for Tucson, as well as the baby blue goalkeeper jersey. None can keep it out of the back of the net, as the Argentinian now has three goals on the season. Again, possession advantage to Tucson, but again, just haven't been able to connect in the final third. It's been their story through the first three games, and again is here in the fourth. The Richmond, same stories for them as well. Conceding possession, no problem. They're making the most of it when they do have the ball. Converting on their opportunities. You look at last game, that was the perfect blueprint of a Richmond game early in this season. They gave possession to Madison, but they had eight shots compared to Madison's seven. They had one on target and it found the back of the net. That was all they needed. 
for the one nil victory. When their defense and Akira Fitzgerald are playing the way they are. All it might take is one, well they have two. And it's looking like a nice cushion that's gonna be tough to overcome for Tucson with just under a quarter hour remaining. Bolduck knocks it down, I'm in Kona. Keeps it in. Chesky having a conversation with Niall Logue. Bolduck is down. Looked like he was in some pain on the sideline. Play continues on the other side. Thompson will go backwards. Magalhe is under some pressure from Adams. Beautifully kept alive, but Kraft thought Terzaghi was gonna get there, he couldn't. Possession lost for Richmond. Ali Velton swipes, Adams tried to dummy it through Deflected, now to Liotti. Physical play through, takes down his man, and now the whistle blows. Foul goes against Liotti. Came in strong. And a look at that one on the Absolute Stone Design replay. Falk took the brunt of that one. Jersey's around him, gets it through to Dennis. Towards the box, first bit of action for Dennis. Into the middle, Liotti gets a foot to it, takes a deflection. And Fitzgerald able to get it securely. If that one didn't take the deflection, that one looked like it might have been going towards that lower corner. Liotti acrobatically able to somehow get a foot to that one, full stretch. But as we cross the 80 minute mark, as I mentioned, now we are into the territory where have to watch out for a goal from Tucson. 87, 90, and 93. The three minute marks at which their goals have come this season. They need to pull two back if they want a point. We've seen a couple of crazy 2-2 two -two draws already in USL League One this season. Silva. In the middle, Dennis stuck underneath his foot. Up to Adams, a shot, finds the side netting. Here we go again, Tucson, the late charge. Like clockwork, late in games, this team comes alive. The substitute, Dennis, gets it into Adams, and he beats Fitzgerald. The first time. Richmond has conceded since game one. We showed you earlier in the half, and we're up to a 255 minute streak. Tucson doesn't let that get to the 300 mark. Shaq Adams, his first goal of the season. Maybe something again, quick, Adams, Iliati in the box. Tried to get a cross in, knocked out for a corner. 
We did have a substitution during that goal celebration as well. Daryl Longden, the forward in for the defender, Charles Booth. All attacking minded right now for Tucson, and they have the momentum. Do they sense blood in the water? That goal in the 80th minute, excuse me, 81st minute officially, their earliest goal scored of the season. They save their magic for late. Do they have some more? Eight to go in regulation plus stoppage. The corner sent in, headed away for now. You can sense the new life from this Tucson side, a breath of energy after Adams found the side netting. Dennis the substitute, got the assist before, sends it in, headed away. Ellie Velton. On the wing, sent in, knocked in, and just wide. At the back post, Longden had the goal yawning, but couldn't get a good touch to it. On the absolute stone design replay, had visions of the equalizer just a couple of minutes after coming on. Did his best to get to it, but just too much pace on that ball, and Richmond now in some danger. John Gallus said every time he has ever coached against Darren Sawatsky, there has been some fireworks and some drama, whether it's a scuffle on the field, we haven't had that yet, or late goals. Well, the late goals, we have one of them, and we're coming awfully close to possibly tying things up. He gave us fair warning to not think this one is over until the final whistle is blown, no matter what happens. Another substitution coming for Richmond in a moment. It's Greg Baim in for Riley Kraft. And Kraft, Richmond's another tremendous game for Richmond. Entering the match, number 21, Greg Baim, replacing number 98, Riley Kraft, in the 85th minute. Inching towards the 90th. Joe Malfa here with you on ESPN+. Plus. Once this one's over, make sure to head over to the Greenville-Chattanooga game for North Texas against New England at 9 o'clock. Still some more action tonight in USL League One. And this one, far from over. Longden looks to play it up towards Adams. Flag popped up. But that speed now on the left wing. It's showcasing itself. corner. Now Bolda closing in on Silva, but he lofts it up. Only to the other team, though. Bolaños on his preferred left foot. The shot is saved by Marancio. Bolaños was looking for the insurance goal. Marancio wants to keep this one where it is. Give his team a chance to tie it. Officially 282 minutes on that shutout streak. Tucson wants a second from distance over the bar from Alarcon. Need to take another look at that one. Roberto Alarcon, bad first touch, but it ended up working out for him after it hopped up, turned it into a volley, and almost something spectacular.
Richmond in no rush to get this one back into play. Battle down the wing. One by Terzaghi. Gonna be a throw for the kickers. They'll bide their time in the corner. But Terzaghi gets rid of it quickly and it's a goal kick for Marancio. Tucson has been dangerous when they try to play quickly on the break. They go quickly again. Bulldog forces them to pull up a little bit. The defense coming back by the winger. Longdon nods it down. Silva sends it across. Liotti looking for it. Headed away by Miguel Hayes. Opened up the scoring tonight. Makes a defensive play there. And Richmond just boots this one. They'll regroup. Two minutes left of the 90. Haven't been really any many injuries or lengthy stoppages in this second half. Not sure what stoppage time might look like. But for now, just the two minutes of regulation remaining for Tucson. Have to imagine it's at least three. Sent in Liotti all alone. That one might keep him up tonight. Couple yards of space. Venter just lost his mark. Liotti could not snap the head around in time to steer that one on the goal frame and test Akira Fitzgerald. When you get this close to the 90th minute, you gotta make sure the socks and shin guards are all set. Take as much time off the clock as you can before you send it back into play. Dennis can't take it down. Terzaghi looks to break for Richmond. Taken down hard from behind. Yellow card shown to Dennis. Yellow card issued to two shot number 10, Charlie Dennis. Another look at that one on the absolute stone design replay. Hard tackle from Dennis. Claimed he got a bit of the ball. Maybe he did, but a lot of body. Kazagi being tended to by the training staff. awaiting official word on stoppage time as Dennis has shown the yellow card and the clock strikes 90. Scoreboard still reads two to one for Richmond. The goal from Terzaghi, the difference right now. Five minutes of stoppage time, the official ruling. Ivan Kona played that one too quickly for Chesky. He'll have to redo it. Now it looked like he was just content to send that out to the wing to Bolaños to kill some time, but from this spot on the field, he thought Richmond might try to get the insurance goal, a good chance to whip one in here. But after seeing how dangerous Tucson has been on the break, might be wise to just keep the numbers back and kill as much time as you can. I don't know if they had that in mind of just conceding the goal kick though. And Marantio scrambles quickly to get it back into play. for the goal scorer Adams. He shields it beautifully. A chance to send it across, he does. In front, knocked away by Venter, cleared further by Antley. Terzaghi for Bolaños, foot race. Bolaños loses it, won by Calvo. Falk just ducked under that one, hit him in the back. Possession remains with Tucson after that misplay. Longdon working on Antley, battle of the twos. Is it off of last? Richmond, that'll be Tucson's ball. Come on, 
Long throw incoming from Tucson. Front post, punched away by Fitzgerald, he's on the ground. He recovers. About three minutes to go of the stoppage time. Long it in space, on the ground, loose ball. Shot by Silva, blocked. Miguel Hayes puts his body on the line. Tucson is forced to regroup. Long ball from Ellie Velton. Venter clears, Terzaghi taken down. No call, Dennis regroups for Tucson again. About two to go of stoppage time. Alarcon. Plays it into Adams. His goal cut the lead in half. On the wing, sent in, Silva. Ellie Velton chips in. Now he nods it back. Sprays it out wide, left side. Logue. Liotti. Slide put in by Antley. It'll be a goal kick, the call from Chesky. Richmond fired up to maintain possession there. Another look at this slide from Antley. Toss up, could have gone either way. Richmond will take it on the absolute stone design replay. Unofficially one minute remaining of stoppage time. Unless Chesky decided to add any more. Terzaghi taking it to the corner. Looking into the middle of the box, but he'll just waste some time in the corner. Knocked out, goal kick. Marantio scrambles. Richmond seconds away from a second consecutive victory. Tucson hoping to avoid a second consecutive Narrow two to one defeat. Long ball, Shaq Adams uses his speed, keeps it in. Down the end line, in, saved by Fitzgerald. Off the chest. It'll be Richmond's throw. Leotti shoves this one into Antley. We've reached the five minutes of stoppage time. How much more? Tucson has to hurry. We're past the allotted five. Maybe one more attack being allowed by Chesky. Alarcon chips it up the wing. It's gonna be too long, out for a goal kick. Crowd cheering on its feet. Chesky gives a look at the watch as Fitzgerald saunters out to grab the ball. Chesky tries to hurry up Fitzgerald. Past six minutes of stoppage time now. And there will be no more. The final whistle. Richmond, two victories in a row. Sawatsky beats his former team. And the kickers are still perfect at home. Ivan Magalhe scored early. Emiliano Terzaghi made it 2 nothing. Shaq Adams. Cut the lead in half late, 80th minute. But Richmond able to hold on for the two to one victory here at City Stadium. Take a look now at the man of the match presented by Woodfin and who else but Emiliano Terzaghi. He is credited with the game winning goal. Came back in the 42nd minute, third goal of the season. He's tied for second in the league now. Everybody chasing Greg Hurst 
at the top with four. But Terzaghi's third earns him the man of the match, earns Richmond the hard fought victory. And we'll be back in a moment with highlights and stats here on ESPN Plus. Two to one win for Richmond. When building our home, I knew that the stone was going to be the absolute foundation to our house. I knew it needed to be durable, but also I wanted it to be beautiful. I love working with Absolute Stone Design because their customer service is top notch, their staff is super friendly, and most of all, they truly care. Come explore Absolute Stone Design's reimagined showroom, featuring our all new shower and flooring galleries. No dream home is complete without Absolute Stone Design. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Bon Secours. Healthcare for the universe of you. Making things easier for you has never been more important. At Atlantic Union Bank, here's what that means. Pull up to our drive through where service meets safety. With debit card controls, turn your personal card off if you suspect fraud, then turn it back on when everything's okay. And remember our free identity theft resolution services, because hackers never rest. Just a few ways we make banking easier. Learn more at AtlanticUnionBank.com. Joe Alpha back here with you on ESPN Plus. Richmond wins two to one, and we now take a look at the Impossible Pups play of the match. It's Emiliano Terzaghi's game-winning goal. He was the man of the match as well, and he earned it by the goal in the 42nd minute that gave Richmond at the time the two nothing lead. Big scramble in front, kept alive here by Bolduck. Riley Kraft turns and takes a shot. Terzaghi finds a loose change, puts it past Marancio for the goal chaotic play in front. The Argentinian comes through for his third goal of the season. Gave them a 2-0 lead that became a 2-1 victory for Richmond. Now a look at the full-time highlights brought to you by Elephant Insurance. The goal in the eighth minute by Miguel Hayes got them off and running. Delivery from Mawape. Miguel Hayes did the rest. And that put Richmond on the front foot as Darren Sawatsky likes to be very early on. They had another goal in the first half. Again, you just saw it. It was the Impossible Pups play of the match. Here it is again on the Elephant Insurance full-time highlights. Miliano Terzaghi, third goal of the season. 2-0 lead for Richmond. Marancio tried to will his team on early, but they looked like they were struggling in the first half. Some opportunities then in the second half for Richmond as well before Tucson started to find their rhythm again. Kraft's corner was punched away and then sent right back across by Pavone, whiskers wide. Terzaghi had one more chance in this one, saved by Marancio at the near post. And Kraft again forces Marancio into a great save. That one seemed to be heading to the low corner. Liotti came in as a sub. This was the first warning shot for Fitzgerald and Richmond as Tucson found its groove late as they have in every game so far this season. This one sent across and again Liotti able to get a foot to it. But it was blocked before it could head towards that back corner. Another look. Liotti did well to even get to that one. But Fitzgerald comes away cleanly. Then the goal. Dennis into Shaq Adams finds the side netting. For the goal, brought it to two to one, but Tucson would go no further. A two to one victory in the end for the Richmond Kickers. A look now at the full-time stats. Shots evened out late as Tucson made a late charge. 14 to 11 in favor of Richmond. Two to one victory for the Kickers. Shots on target in their favor. Possession Tucson's way, but they could not do enough with it. It was a beautiful evening here at City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. And the kickers 
are able to come away with their second consecutive home victory of the season. Emiliano Terzaghi gets the game-winning goal, and Richmond catapults all the way up to second place right now in USL League One. For my broadcast crew, I'm Joe Malfa. Thanks for tuning in this evening. Stay tuned for more USL League One action on ESPN+. Plus. 9 o'clock, North Texas, New England Revolution 2. Thanks for tuning in, and good night. United Soccer League League One cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League League One.